Authors Tell All, a podcast by Shy Soul. She's bringing you author interviews, book discussions, and more. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, we are now live with author Candice. She will be here talking about her new book that will be coming out November 5th. It is her book two to her part one, Never Broken. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I'm doing great. It's lovely to have you on the show. You know, we have already talked before we were on the same publishing company it was lovely. You were so sweet. So let's talk about your book. What's so different about this one? Um, it's not different because I kind of stepped outside of my comfort zone a little bit with it. I um, touched on mental illness, which is something I've never written about before. So that was way different for me. I had to do a lot of research and, and prepare myself for that one. So I think... I think it's um, a pretty good book for it to be my first time writing about something like this. Okay, and first of all, I love the cover. Did you get inspiration for that cover? Did you, you know, have your, your visual for it? Because it's very different. When I seen it, I was like, whoa, that's different. Once I told Kiana the concept, she kind of came up with that as when I... Um, when I saw it, I was like, that is perfect. That fits me in with the storyline and everything. So I was, I was excited about it. Like, once I told her a summary of the story, she went and found it for me. Because from my my look of it, when I seen it, I was like, whoa, is this going to be psychological is this going to be paranormal is it going to be dark romance i had so many questions just by the cover so tell your well after hearing this your new readers what genre is this book exactly it is urban romance mm-hmm. um, it doesn't have any paranormal and even though i will say like i thought paranormal when i first saw the cover but then when I went back and thought about what the book was about, it fit exactly. So, not not paranormal, but still you get the aspect of romance and mental illness and that little urban fiction in there, too. Mm-hmm. It's, I really like it. It's very different. The title, I really like the title. You're welcome. I really like the title and the cover because I had so many questions. That's what I like when I see different covers because it makes me question like what genre will this be well will it be about a song and so forth so i know you have two characters empress and royalty which are twin sisters what's more to them in this book um empress and royalty are twin sisters um they Mm-hmm. And they're trying to investigate that secret from coming out. 
Ooh, that now that's that's something. Hmm. Yes. They but got... um, with Empress keeping that secret gets a little challenging. <laughs> now, why was it a little challenging? Why is she a little challenging? Because Empress is wild. Mm-hmm. Empress really doesn't care what she says. She really oh. she just doesn't care. She's gonna say what she wants to say. She doesn't care who's listening. intrigued I, I already read up on some on the book not finished yet you know i am i'm a reader i love reading and the storyline really caught me very different so oh go ahead mm-hmm. now about your other characters why don't you explain a little bit about them too and what's their roles? Okay, well, um, uh, Lucas, who also goes by the name Street, and Franco are brothers. They did not, they were not raised together. Um, Franco is, uh, their father's son from when, before he met Street's his mother. And, um, when he was with Franco's mother, he was heavy in the street. He didn't want to settle down, but she got pregnant thinking the baby would make him marry her. And once he didn't, then basically she just cut him out of Franco's life. So they didn't see each other until they were adults. But the bond that they have, you would never be able to tell that because they're always together. They stick up for each other. They have each other that kind of way. So really, you would think, for one, you would think they have two different mothers because they're so much alike. And two, you would never have kissed that they didn't meet each other. I think they, I think Franco was in his that's very but um that's interesting <laughs> they have that bond even though they get me to much later in life wow cause I, I see you added in though the real life factors I can tell that's that can actually happen like now or any other time I like that that's different it actually did happen to me that's how I came up with the idea. Um, I have a sister that I just met last year. Um, I knew she existed, but I never knew where she was. And we met um, last year um, for my birthday for the first time. So that's where the idea came from. <laughs> wow. So you added a real life factor, an actual real life factor that happened to you in this book. So no, yeah. no wonder this has five stars. Because <laughs> it's bringing in that that real life and your readers will be able to connect will definitely be able to connect Mm -hmm. with that now what about now was that hard for you to put in the book was it kind of hard for you to write slightly no because just like with the books in the book when I met her it was just like we had known each other our whole lives I you cannot be around us and not know that we've only known each other in years. So when I wrote it, I was writing it from that, you know, the aspect of it shocked me that we were so close. Mm-hmm. And it shocked her too. So it's kind of like, let me put this in his book because there's something that I'm going through while I'm writing it. And I think it'll be a good, a good aspect to add in there. So it wasn't, it wasn't weird or um, difficult at all. It's really easy. Hmm. I don't know if, as an author, I don't know if I can actually, that would probably be hard because I'm a very emotional writer. I probably would have went through the the works with adding that in my own book. I would have put, like, 
I know you put a lot of emotion into it, but me, I probably would have been crying and been like, oh my goodness, and all extra. And then after I wrote a road, I'd be like, okay, I'm done now. <laughs> That's the type of writer there I am. Are, mm -hmm. There has happened to me before, like, especially I'm writing a book now, and I'm putting a lot of real life into it, and difficult like every time I write a thing I did have flashbacks in one car. So um I do have things that I put that I realize that are hard. Mm -hmm. But that was something. Wow. I wouldn't have never thought like, you know, reading it, I would have never thought like, oh this really happened to her or anything like that. It was just a really good point in the book. And I was like, mm there's going to be a lot of reviewers who are going to be like, oh, this happened to me, and so on and so forth. Mm hmm It's relatable. So, actually, how long have you been writing? What made you want to write? Uh, I've been writing for about three years now. Uh, I started out as a promoter for a lot of authors, and I started writing about them. Mm-hmm. And then I had a couple stories ideas, story um, ideas in my head. this notoriety from your books did you did you think a lot of readers would gravitate to you so quickly or did you think it was going to take any time how did you feel about that I actually didn't think people would gravitate to me at all I was like all these good authors out there who is going to listen to me who is going to be able to read sorry anything that I write but um I put myself out there Step out on faith, and I'm still getting readers every day. Mm. Like, it's crazy. So, just the fact that your um, status and your readers are just growing by the day and by the months. I like it. Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, now, about your other books. I know you will be re-releasing some of your books and all that good jazz, but tell me about what you think was your most popular book that everybody loved. Um, Captivate by Love the Day was my most popular book. Mm-hmm. That's the, um, the last series I put out um, before this one. That was the most popular one. And actually, that book was different for me, too. It's like the last two series outside of my comfort zone. So, why was it a little difficult for you? Because it was different for me. Like, that was the first time I had um, written about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So, with me, um, that, that's the first book I've written that none of my real life was in it. So, it was me just doing, going strictly on research and my imagination. I didn't think it was going to make sense. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a little bit how I felt about when I wrote my, when I wrote my very first really like thuggish novel. I felt as if nobody was going to read it, nobody was going to like it. You know, I had did my research and did all that, but I felt like nobody was going to gravitate to it until I posted the cover, the synopsis, and then book got published. And it was like, well, we didn't know that you can come up with something like that. We know you as, you know, the com contemporary author and so on and so forth. I was like, I have many sides to me. I just knew this was going to be different. And after I got that good response to it, I was like, okay, I can move on to different genres if I wanted to. So. Right. That's how I am. 
So is it any other genres you would like to write? Or you just want to stick with what you're writing now? I want to play a hand in erotica a little bit. Um, I want to do a mystery novel. So I want to branch out to those two for sure. People keep asking me about paranormal. Paranormal, I'm just not sure my mind can go there yet. Probably give me another year too. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot that you could do with erotica, and there's a lot that you can do with paranormal. Paranormal for sure. You can come up with your with your own creature, and it would do well. You can come up with your own type of witch or anything like that to stand out. Because the standard for a paranormal book, in my opinion, is a vampire or a werewolf. You know, that's the casual paranormal way to go in my opinion so if you wanted to dabble in that there's so much you can you can do with it so i just say go for it every time i hear a, a black author say that i say go for it because you can come up with something different for a urban paranormal paranormal story mystery story and too now i just read um an urban paranormal by my um author friend and she said that she read the mystery that would be that would be nice it really would because if you could do a story like you did with the thug and the new book that you're writing that's coming out soon there's a lot that you can play with that now, for your book that we'll be releasing soon, I know it's your book too, and I know you really can't give away too much, but what is it that you can say about it? Um, I will say the secret is revealed. Well, for the people who read, because this the part one is a re-release, so for the people who read the book the first time, they know what the secret is. Mm-hmm. And for the people who don't know, they'll find out the secret in the second book. Um, part two, from I, I test reader said, it takes it's a lot of emotion that's involved with it. it it's gonna gonna need some tissue for it because Empress and Royalty go through a whole lot of emotional stuff in part two. Mm -hmm. But you also gonna get frustrated with a couple characters because um, the streets is fading and his girlfriend is not exactly who he thinks she is. So. It's, it's gonna be an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> mm. So, my question, okay, you, I know this is a re release. So, when you first wrote it, did you just want it to be just one book or did you want it to be a series? A part I one, part two. I always start out my books as they're gonna be one book, but somewhere down the line, I feel like, okay, this could be good. Or something, so I'm just going to stop it right here. <laughs> so, I didn't want people to just know there's a secret, find out the secret, and find out what happens after the secret in one book. Mm -hmm. So, I just decided to just leave that cliffhanger there. Oh, okay. So, you're, so, just for, just for the second book, you're just going to add a lot more to it to really grip your readers in this next book. I like it. But part two has a lot more background and uh, um, background information, and it makes a lot of stuff that happened in part one make sense. Mm hmm Like, you're in part one, you get some, why did this happen? I can't wait to figure out what, what, why you need to find out part two. Nice. Now, besides this book and your other books are you working on anything new or you're just working on one piece at a time i have three books that i've started um i'm gonna do my first novella i'm gonna try to have it out at, at the end of november that's my that's my plan if not the very beginning of december i have two novellas um i'm working on I want to do 
shocked on 30 books being done I need to no, three, three. oh okay I was like wait did I hear that wrong okay uh, okay okay cause I was about to I was about to say like she has been good, good lord she's about to have a book out okay okay I was about to okay Let me, okay I can, I can relax now okay so three books <laughs> So, in next year, how many books do you think you will have done? How many books do you think you'll have accomplished? I want to put out at least seven books this year. If I don't, if I don't do more, mm-hmm. um, I'm already. One, uh, there's one of my books that um, I had up that I um, took down that I'm going to revamp and do a re-release on them and add a lot of new material to it because after I wrote it, I could come up with ideas for it. So, um, I'm going to re-release it. So I have that that I'm working on and I'm going to try to do my erotica sometime next year and then probably towards the end of the year, I do, mm-hmm. do my paranormal. Mm, I like it. I really do, cause I'm. You already know I already be up on your work, like sharing, reposting, yeah. <laughs> all that. Um. So, where do you see yourself as a author? Mm, I say ten years. I ask every author this. Um. I would like to be mainstream. Mm-hmm. Have my books in bookstores. Um, I definitely want my books in prison. There's a lot of prisons that read. A lot of them. So I definitely want to, um, that's actually, that would be less than 10 years. I'm trying to work on that now. So, um, bookstores, doing more, um, book events, book signings, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I want to host one of my own book signings, not just a 10 one. So, hopefully, I'll get popular and can do that. Okay, I like I like that. I like that you have your career mapped out. I really do. Do you see yourself as becoming a best-selling author soon? I'm crossing my fingers and praying for it. We don't see. It. <laughs> I'm praying for it. I would love to see this title. <laughs> Now, now, um, as an author, how do you feel of, about writing in the urban industry? When you first came out, how did you feel about the scene when you first showed up, basically?
is there any negative sides to the urban industry that kind of because I know me I was like oh I don't like some of it so like I definitely just say to myself as an author how did you feel about anything negative that you I hate it like that. Mm -hmm. I hate that we can't just all come together as authors and support each other Exactly. So, I hate the beef. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel, too. Because we can all work together, but you know, you have some authors who just don't want to go that route. They just want to be in their own lane or their own bubble. Then you have the other right. authors who just, who just, just don't, I don't know how to, how to put it without being rude. <laughs> They just, they just want to write books and just be about the drama. I don't know if it's a tactic to gain readers. I'm still trying to figure that out. That's a point I haven't figured out. Because when you see some drama about a book or anything, you notice that if your book, their book gets a little boosted. Like you notice that a lot of people are sharing it. Or they might just be new authors like us or something. And it's a whole drama field about them. And all of a sudden their book is just just up there. And I'm like, how did that happen? What was what was the drama yeah. about? Was it the company that did this? How would you feel? To me, mm -hmm. Go ahead. To me, it's like, I don't want to embarrass my publisher. And so to me, it's like, I don't want to embarrass my publisher. And to me, like, if I'm out there beefing with somebody, I'm always cursing at somebody on my face page and down somebody, that makes her look disrespectful of her. Right, because I have been, I have seen a little, I've only been writing, well, I've been writing for a while before published, so my books were out there, but they weren't on Amazon or anything like that. So when I was on social media and on that platform, I seen a lot of that. I seen a lot of just of not being obnoxious or just being rude or starting stuff over a book that... They didn't copy, they didn't do anything like that. They just didn't like that author or so on and so forth. So then that just brought a whole bunch of people to their book. And now they have almost about to be a million reads now. They was already a small page. And then all of a sudden their page just shot up. And now they have this and that many followers. Just like with Facebook or anything like that. Or your books on Amazon, your sales just boost. Like what kind of tactic is that to want to be the bad author I still don't I still don't get that I'll never be that type of author you know that would want to get popularity off of that right it's not the right the right way to go in my opinion but you know to, I, that's my God was a teacher on that's how that's how people market themselves have fun with it it's just not something I do right that, that makes me want to see what the other like with Stephen King like with those authors I want to be able to see if it was if it could ever be a way to see how they react to anything on social media you'll never see that really happen but if it was reverse let's see what the other authors what they're just regular romance you know how do they handle certain things like that? You, you get what I'm saying? That's something I would like to see. Because with urban fiction, they try to downplay us so much. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. They really do. But I don't, I don't know. I kind of think like the more mainstream authors like that, I don't really care. Mm-hmm. 
tell any new aspiring author that wanted your wanted advice from you on how to become an author what would you give them do your research before you um if you go and find to a company before you sign one do your research your research everything you want to know about if it's a particular publisher you have in mind or something like that your research, you know what kind of books you want to write, you know who you want to submit to, you know um, who you want your reader base to kind of be like, what kind of reader you want to reach. It's research, research, research. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that because that's exactly what I did. I did nothing but research on different topics or anything, I, of course, I did not know about that I wanted in my book. To make it seem more realistic, that's what I did. It was a whole bunch of research. Because if you don't know about it, you can't just make it up and write about it. Because you're going to have real people who are your readers who have been through that, yep, who know it. And they're going to give you a two-star, one-star just for that reason, maybe. Exactly. They'll well how are you writing about this and you don't know and did you do your research? They're gonna say things like that or I can't connect with this with this book because they did this, that and the other and I don't know what honestly when I write a book I don't know what honestly what I expect my my reader to think of the book because you know I'm writing a book because I love writing. I stopped I stopped writing books to please my authors because I learned this when I was on Wattpad. I stopped writing books to please my authors a long time ago because when I first started you know putting my work out there, I wrote a book that I thought I loved it but I didn't. Because I was writing it for just my readers. And it gained a lot of popularity and this, that, and the other. But I was like, that's not how I write. That's not my my style or my really my way of thinking. I'm not trying to be like any other author. So I'm going to take this down and just start over. Once I started over and I seen, and my readers seen what kind of author I really was. The ones that wanted the books that I was writing for them, they left. They they weren't they were not a real supporter. They just said, "Oh, we'll just go to another author that writes exactly what she was trying to write." So when I wrote what I really wanted to write, that's when I got all the real readers. For me, it's like I, I write what I want to write, but it's it's always like you can't please everybody. Yep. When Captain made my love of a gangster part one first came out. I had somebody upset with me because my character was, um, my main character, Autumn, she called herself beautiful. And then, of course, you know, you describe your character so people know what she looks like. And I put that she was mixed. Now, mind you, after I wrote it, I didn't remember how she looked. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember that I put that she was mixed. But somebody gave me a one star because um, I said that she was beautiful because she was mixed. I wasn't saying it like that. But mm-hmm. She felt like she was beautiful, period. She was, that was her self-esteem. So it was just like, how? I, I'm a dark-skinned girl. Like, I have no problem. I write about dark-skinned women, mixed women, all kinds of women. So that, that was not my intention at all. And that just shocked me. Yeah. So I just like, from now on, my character but how I want to look. Just, just not even hit it. Yeah, I remember when I wrote, I'm trying to think, I wrote a, it was kind of like a very emotional scene. Um, 
girl had got kidnapped and I'm probably I'm not gonna change it I mean half of my readers uh, if they're even listening I don't know if they would remember this the the really loyal ones who read this book before they probably will but in the book the girl gets kidnapped and eventually she gets raped so it was a reviewer I got a bad review just because of that and I wanted to reply because I felt as if this is that's really real life. Those things really do happen. And she felt as if my character had already been through too much. And I was already dragging her way through too much. But from the first chapter of that novel, you already seen she had went through whatever she went through. And then in the middle of the book, she's trying to break free of that. And then someone from her past comes and tries to ruin it. So now she has to fight to get back what she already escaped. So that reader did not like that because of that. Because That's of that crazy one point. Autumn goes through. Yeah. Autumn, they don't have so much of Autumn and Captain Rick about them things. That whole, everything you just did. And I had one of those people too that told me she went through so much. But we are, as an author, we are writing characters that are kind of based off of real people or fantasy. It, it, honestly, when you, when someone reads the book, it is someone that will say, this is me. I've been through all of this. So it is real yep. people that go through so much and it's nobody controlling their life. There's nobody writing this for them. They've actually been going through this for you don't know how long and now they're trying to figure out a way how to escape it how to overcome it or they just don't care anymore and now they're just a person that is a hate monger and you know they just do anything they want they don't care about people you know that's real life and as an author we try to captivate all all of that and if the reader i feel as if the reader probably did go through it and they don't want to read it they wasn't expecting that to happen so now they're going to give it a bad review because it didn't go the way they thought or they did where they what they couldn't do you know i'm not saying this in a bad way but that's what i that's what i pretty much put together because i've heard that so much because when i write a book i put real life events like that in my books you know other authors do the same thing the white authors when they write their crime uh -huh. books or the the guy who wrote every episode for law and order law and order has all of that in every episode basically so you're right of, of course you're gonna have viewers who are gonna be like oh they need to take this down because this that and the other i don't want my child looking at this why not because that's giving them information of wow this can actually happen Mm -hmm. And some people just don't like to face reality, even if it's fiction or non-fiction. They just, they just don't, don't care. I don't, I don't understand exactly what they would want to read, you know, like what is actually their preference. Because I can't, if I have over a hundred readers, I can't determine that at all. <laughs> You know, I, you would have some that, oh, right, exactly. You you have the authors who, or what kind of genres do you guys like reading? You know, you can't target everyone because you're going to get a new reader who's like, oh, I didn't like this because of that reason. And you're going to have the ones that say, I liked it because of that reason. So, it's a win-win situation. Right. Mm-hmm. So, out of everything you've learned and gained as an author and you see your work flourishing just what is more that you can probably do with your craft to even elevate more that's my final question I don't feel like I've gone deep enough yet mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like I've dug deep 
down in my inside of me and waiting for them. I read for my heart, but I don't think I've completely read for my heart. I don't, I don't think I've put it. I don't, put, I don't think I put my soul into reading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, well, this book, the, my first novel that I have coming out, that's what I'm doing with this one. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like there's a lot of stuff that I that I can say and a lot of stuff that I can get out that will not only be beneficial to me because I'm getting it out, but it'll help my readers understand me mm-hmm. a lot better and and see me in a whole different way. So once I once I go as deep as I know I can go, then I feel like okay, I'm I'm, I'm a writer now. <laughs> I feel that you're putting this out in the atmosphere, I feel as if, now that you said it out loud, I know you probably even said this out loud before, but for it to get replayed, I feel as if now that you said it, you're going to, your next, say your next fourth or fifth book, I feel like you're going to put all that emotion and deepness into your next book. And you, just like how I did, I felt the same way. When I wrote, my book with a girl who went through something so torturous and so just so inhumane that a person could do that to her when I wrote that in my mind I did not know I could write anything like that you know I was writing all the bromance and everything like that but when I wrote that particular book it made me cry I know I said I'm an emotional writer and what I mean by I'm an emotional writer meaning I put all my emotions into my characters and the scenes and stuff like that but this book particularly it brought out a side of a writer that I didn't know I was that I could actually come up with something like this and that book a lot of people was like oh my god you know this book you wrote I really could connect with and I could really feel you know and I couldn't believe that I could actually write something like that and I actually went that deep into a story that I can come out of and feel like, wow, that was so overcoming for me. And right then I knew I could write. Right then, right there with that book, I was like, I'm ready to be published. I'm ready to put my work out where more people can read this. I always felt like it takes that one book to take you to a whole new level writing yep and that book was the book for me so now that you put that out there i feel as if you're gonna go through that same thing you know it might be different for you but you're gonna it's you're gonna feel it in your heart when you're writing and in your soul you're gonna feel like wow i finally did it yep. and you're That's excellent right i'm gonna be when i uh, when i can't I tried to write it before, and it got too emotional for me. But I'm trying to tell myself, you can do it. Just, just finish it. Just finish the book. Right. I felt like that too. I definitely have, and it was a little bit because of writer's block. You know, I had a little bit of writer's block, and I was like, I just want to finish it, and it took me to really look deep into what I was writing that was new for me and that's what made me just go into it and oh I love writing this book now and I can finish it without downing myself while writing it or anything like that I feel that too. Now, we have come to our final points. And at this time, you get to give any shout outs. You get to shout out your books, any other any other authors that you feel that need the recognition, any recommendations. If you want to say anything to your readers, 
this is what you can do right now. She loves you, and that was our final points with Candace. We love you guys. See you again. Bye.